Thank you for watching Concord United on YouTube. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you can stay up to date with our latest videos. If you'd like more information about our church, please visit concordunited.org. We hope you will take advantage of our many opportunities to share Christ, serve others, and grow in faith. It's wonderful to have the chance to share with you this evening as once again after a year hiatus we are back together for this wonderful service of candlelight and communion on Christmas Eve when once again we can uh, have the bread placed in our hands. You know I've, I've enjoyed communion with the little tear off cups uh, and I think Jesus works through that. I also think Jesus looks at it and says not exactly what I had in mind but it's creative. To, today, uh, I want to share with you that we've been going through a message series here at Concord United Methodist called God Broke, Breaks Through. And we're looking at how at Christmas God breaks through all the barriers that keep us from God's will, that keep us from the life God desires for us. And tonight we're looking at how God breaks through even in the midst of our pain. Now, I want to share with you that uh, some of you might have a Christmas tradition uh, in your life that's similar to one in mine. And one of the things I enjoy doing is sometimes having a gift under the tree that's addressed to me that nobody else knows about. And it's often from Santa, and it's often something I found at the store that I thought Santa would want to give me. <laughs> and tonight, if you're looking at something to give yourself— for, for Christmas, I want to encourage you, if you are not yet a part of our Bible, daily Bible reading plan, there's nothing better you could give yourself. You can go to concordunited.org slash Bible. We are reading through the Bible together, and we began in the Old Testament in August. We're going to complete the New Testament in May. You can jump in right now in the New Testament and come uh, right, right into the good stuff and would encourage you to, to do so. If you can read five minutes a day, we've got a plan for you. If you can read for 15, we've got a plan for you. Now, today we're going to look at the scriptures from Matthew that tell of the birth of Jesus. And particularly at Christmas time, we often like to have things that help us ignore the pain and the struggle of life. Sometimes looking at Christmas lights, hearing the music, it's so comforting. For us, and I am no stranger uh, to uh, trying to uh, use things at Christmas uh, to comfort myself. Particularly, I enjoy comfort food at Christmas. If you were with my family tomorrow morning, we we will go to Bristol, Virginia. We will go to my wife's family farm. There will be a lot of aunts and uncles and cousins. We will have a a big country breakfast there. And if you could see my plate. When I go through Lyme, you would see just a little bit of biscuits, and you would see just a little bit of breakfast casserole, and a little bit of sausage, and a little bit of bacon. And the reason you would only see a little bit is because if you looked at the plate, it would look like I attempted to drown my sorrows and my breakfast in sausage gravy, <laughs> right? I, I enjoy the, the comfort food. But it's important at Christmas that we don't entirely ignore our pain. Because those who were part of the first Christmas story knew pain. And God encountered them in his, their pain. And he transformed their pain into love. And so let's hear this from Matthew's gospel, the first chapter, beginning with the 18th verse. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but he had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus." What, what we find here 
is that both Joseph and Mary in this uncertain time had, had significant pain in their lives. The pain of uncertainty, the pain of seeing their life plan begin to, to crumble all around them. And when we look at how they handled their pain faithfully so that we celebrate them today and we find joy in, in their story, uh, we find a truth uh, that has also been discovered by the makers of superhero movies. By the folks at, at Marvel and DC Comics and all those people, they discovered this truth in the Bible and they used it to create superheroes and make a kajillion dollars. And here's the truth they discovered. Pain is creative. And pain creates heroes and monsters. It, both heroes and monsters are created from pain. Here's the, the difference between them is heroes find the courage to confront their pain in a power greater than themselves. Now, that's what heroes do. Heroes see their pain and they allow their pain to give them empathy for others going through pain. And they allow their pain to motivate them to reach out to love and to care. Monsters choose a different path. path. Monsters run from their pain and leave a wake of destruction behind them. Uh, monsters won't let God or anyone else into their pain. They uh, hide it within their heart. They allow it to create resentments. And then from those resentments, from thinking the world owes them and that they've gotten a raw deal and that everybody else has it better than them and that because of what they've been through, they should be able to do whatever they want, uh, they leave this wake of destruction. And if we were to keep reading in this gospel, we would hear soon of a monster named King Herod whose own fear and paranoia caused him to become a paranoid, genocidal ruler. Uh, he became a monster, not so for Mary and Joseph. They become heroes because in their pain, they learn to be faithful. They learn to take that pain before God, and it transforms them into people of faith capable of changing the world. Let's consider the, the pain that they must have experienced. Mary felt the pain of being misunderstood. Surely she had gone to Joseph and shared with him that uh, she was going to have a child and shared with him the message that the angel Gabriel gave her and he didn't believe her. From everything we can tell, he was a kind man. He was a loving man. Uh, he didn't want to humiliate her. He didn't want to wreck her life. He made plans to divorce her quietly because in those days, uh, once you were engaged, you were legal, actually legally married even before you had the ceremony and began living together. And he made plans to try and do this with her reputation and her future intact. But he just, that was a bridge too far. He couldn't accept what she was telling him. And now I have to say, whenever Mary and Joseph had that conversation, if I were Mary, thank God I'm not, if I were, the exact thing I would have done after that conversation is I would have gotten on my knees and I would have prayed to the angel Gabriel, but it would not have been a kind prayer. And I would have said, you should have told Joseph this yesterday, right? You said you had this big plan to let him know, well, you need to move up your timeline, big boy. <laughs> Thank God, God chose Mary. Um, <laughs> now, Joseph felt the pain of betrayal. The woman he's pl planning to spend the rest of his life with, everything he'd worked toward in his life would have been towards acquiring the wealth that was needed for a man to enter into the covenant of marriage. Uh, and what we can tell is that he, he and his family had found this woman named Mary who shared their values as faithful Jewish people seeking God. And that now it was all falling apart. Some of us know what it's like to be betrayed by those we love the most. And Joseph felt that pain. And yet Joseph didn't allow that pain to cause him to lash out and intentionally seek to harm Mary. He didn't allow that pain to make him hard and bitter inside. He remained faithful. He, he was, we're told, was a righteous man. He was seeking God and seeking how could he be kind and faithful even in this extraordinary circumstance. And eventually, Gabriel did speak to him in a dream and let him know what was really going on. But it was only because 
He didn't allow that pain to fester into hate in his heart. He invited God into that, that he could hear the message and be ready to respond, that he was the type of person that God would choose for this sacred task of being the father of Jesus. And once again, if I'm Joseph and Gabriel appears to me, my question to Gabriel is uh, a quote from a wonderful movie uh, that if you ex see all the Christmas movies you can stand, uh, turn on The Wedding Singer, and there's a great quote in there that says, things you should have told me yesterday. <laughs> now, um, if you'd like any other movie references from the early 2000s, I'm here all day. <laughs> jo Joseph is able to follow. Mary's able to trust. Even when things don't look like they're going to work out, she doesn't give up on life because they've learned what to do with their pain. They've learned to, to take their pain to God. And the reason God can transform our pain is because God knows what pain is. In fact, God also felt pain. God felt the pain of watching his children suffer. And he felt that pain so much that he was willing to become human, uh, to dwell among us. Uh, in fact, even to walk the dusty road to a cross for us. Not so that we would never feel pain, but so that we would know joy. Remember, we're told when Jesus was preparing to go to Jerusalem for his final days that he went to the cross for the sake of the joy set before him. And we need to know, when we sing joy to the world, we need to know what we're singing. Joy is not the absence of pain. It's learning to love even when it costs something. And the way we learn to love even when it costs something, and that's really the only type of love there is, is love that costs something. Everything else is just convenience. Uh, but the way we do that is by learning from the God whose love cost him everything. That's, that's how we learn. And that's the message of Christmas. That to people who experience pain, there's a God whose love cost him everything who can teach us how to love even when it costs us something and bring us joy uh, even if it's not the absence of pain. Uh, joy that looks forward to a day uh, in God's eternal kingdom where there will be no more mourning or crying or pain and joy that can love in the meantime when it costs something. I was reminded of this earlier today. It was so meaningful. At our two o'clock service, this was the first time since March of 2020 that we had served communion where we would actually put the bread in your hand and not use the little tear-off cut. It's the first time I'd put bread in somebody's hand and I'd said, this is the body of Christ. And as I was doing it, I began to get a little choked up. And I began to think, you know, keep it together, Cantrell. Nobody, you know, we've talked about being sanitary. Don't, don't let them see your nose running. Just, <laughs> just keep it together. And I was doing good until there were a lot of kids at that service. And there was one little girl, and she must have been five or six. And she had her red Christmas dress on. And cute as could be. And she came through the line. And you could tell she hadn't really been through the line before. And, and that's probably so because uh, last time we did that, she was probably about three. Uh, and she, her mom showed her and she, and she held out her hands. And I took a piece of bread and I put it in her hand. And I said, the body of Christ given for you. And she didn't quite know what to do. So she just looked at me and she said, Merry Christmas. <laughs> and I thought, you're right. Like, that's Christmas, right? We, the bread, the body, like Jesus is given to us. And all the power that was there in that manger is there, right there, right here with us. That's Christmas. That's what power enough uh, power so much greater than the greatest of our pain right here with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to all. This, that's the message that we come to celebrate tonight. In a few moments when you come forward, that's what you'll have the chance to receive and to celebrate. And if you would receive that, then it requires something. It costs something. Not just walking forward uh, and taking bread and juice and ingesting it, but it costs really asking Jesus for the power you'll need 
not to let that pain grow into resentment and hate inside your heart. But in your prayer time, when you seek Christ, to allow him into that so that he might transform it. So that your pain can make you more caring, more kind, more compassionate, more courageous. So you can be a hero in a world that desperately needs them. Let's pray together. Gracious Lord, we come before you to celebrate Christmas, your presence among us, your divine power at work in our world and in our lives. We thank you that you were willing to come the greatest distance from heaven to earth to encounter us in the midst of our messiness, in the midst of our imperfections, in the midst of our pain. So often we run from our and hide from our pain. So often we allow it to make us into resentful, hateful people. But this is not what you created us to be. You created us to be loving, courageous people. So Lord, we turn even our pain and our grief, our shame and our shortcomings over to you. And we ask that your power and the love that we see in your manger and on your cross might live and work in us today. We pray this bold prayer in your name. And we all said together, amen. amen.